Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing the fastest way to convert your NEMA 23 CNC chassis to a NEMA 34 chassis on the market. Now, many times during the week, I'd say in excess of five times a week, I'm asked by potential clients about a retrofit to achieve this, or even my past clients want to do it for a, you know another system or a, an extended system. The bottom line is it is easily done. Uh, and actually this product's been on the market for quite some time. I've designed it a while ago. It's my NEMA 23 to NEMA 34 mounting adapter plate. Now it's a, it's a very simple design. It's three quarter inch piece, 60-60, one anodized red. It's got the centering circle for the motor in, countersunk. It also has countersunk holes for our NEMA 23 screws, which are five millimeter. Now, what I wanted to do with this video is give you a visual representation of how simple this kit is. And again, how fast it is to employ this actual retrofit on your chassis. So what I've got here is an arbitrary length screw for the NEMA 23 mount. This is a 5 mil, 65 mil long screw. So again, 5 millimeter in diameter, 65 millimeters long. It simply gets inserted right here. It's countersunk. You can see how the screw fits. So when we mount the motor here, this will not make contact with our motor. Now. You can see right here, naturally, this end would go towards your CNC chassis. Very simple design. You see how it's employed. And now we take our stainless standoffs. Now I introduced these about, I believe it's last week or a week before that. These are 10 millimeter in length. And how they work is you just simply stack these based on the required spacing you need from your machine. So in this particular instance, we have five stacked. So therefore we have 50 millimeters in spacing already achieved. If we want it to go longer, very simple, we use a longer screw. If we want to go shorter, we would use a shorter screw and just simply pull away the standoffs. Okay, we don't have to worry about rigidity. These are stainless steel. We're fine with that. Okay, so you see now basically what we have here. Now the NEMA 34 comes in just like this, and this is a monster NEMA 34. This is my 1700 ounce model. Okay, so you can see right now how everything fits in. Now the other remaining portion of this retrofit includes six millimeter socket head cap bolts. They're going to mount your motor right to your adapter plate. And the final piece of the puzzle is our stainless steel six millimeter self-locking nuts. These come in here and they just bolt up. That's going to bolt your motor on again. Whoop, if I can thread it on, we'll be good. There we go. Perfect. And now you see exactly how this uh, mocks up, so to speak, to actually be mounted to your chassis. I've had a lot of questions with guys saying, well, why do I need to use these spacers? I want to just use the adapter plate to mount to my chassis. Well, you can do that depending on everybody's design um, as far as application. And you have to pay very close attention. If you were to do that, the odds of you being able to achieve it is slim to none because, again, I have a coupler here from an older retrofit, just to give you visual representation. The coupler's got to come on here, and you're going to use these spacers to give you the proper spacing so we do not have friction on our motor end or our chassis end of the CNC. If you don't have the proper spacing, and you can see here I'm still, I'm still low on the spacing here, I'd have to add another spacer, you're going to find it, it's going to rub. And if it rubs, you're not going to get smooth rotation, and it's basically not usable. So the idea here is to use the stainless spacers along with the proper size five millimeter socket head cap screw and adjust its length appropriate to give you the proper spacing, okay? Using the stainless standoffs, you've got the most rigid platform you can have. And again, the simplest platform by just being able to remove or add spacers as required. But overall, this is the simplest retrofit on the market. Now, what is included in this kit? Very simple. I cannot include the five millimeter screw for your NEMA 23 chassis. Once again, I'm gonna say that closely. I cannot include the five millimeter screw in diameter because I do not know the length for your NEMA 23 motor mount. Everybody's motor mount will require a different length because nothing is standardized in the industry, especially on Chinese chassis, that's not possible. However, you supply this screw to mount, your, uh, to mount the adapter plate to your NEMA 23 chassis, and I will supply the standoffs. Now, I'm gonna give you 50 millimeters uh, in standoffs, so that would be five of these 10 millimeter long 
stainless steel standoffs. That will be included in the kit. Now, of course, that's not set in stone. Of course, everybody's retrofit may require more or less. I'm just starting it there. If you need more or you need less, you'll message me, and therefore I can custom uh, include whatever actual quantity you need to give you the proper spacing. But what else is included is going to be, of course, the adapter plate and, of course, the six millimeter bolts to mount the motor properly to the adapter plate along with the stainless locking nuts. So again, why do we use locking nuts? And I get asked that a lot. Locking nuts make things a lot easier, naturally, as far as hardware, because they have a nylon insert that once you thread this on, you don't need to use Loctite to worry about vibration loosening the motor, okay? So we don't cut corners and do things half-assed, we do it right. All the hardware here is set as an industrial standard. You will be set with this to mount and convert a machine. Now, why would you want to go from a NEMA 23 to a NEMA 34 platform? Well, let's think about this. NEMA 23 motors start at about 100 ounce inches. They go all the way up to 600 ounce inches, which would be my NEMA 24, which is basically a longer bodied frame NEMA 23. The mounting platform is the same, but the actual length of the chassis of the motor is longer. Therefore, we can accommodate a larger coil, which once again increases our torque to 600 ounce inches, also known as 37 and a half inch pounds of torque. Now, that's a lot of torque, but don't get me wrong. This behemoth right here puts out 100 inch pounds of torque. Once again, 1,700 ounce inches is 100 inch pounds of torque. So you can see the difference. We're going o o basically about three times the motor torque using this over my 600 ounce NEMA 24. Now, what machines would benefit from that? Virtually any machine that's using a ball screw where you're looking at a smaller frame, because again, NEMA 34s, unless you're using a geared set where we're gonna take and actually use the torque in the motor to accelerate with like a rack and pinion type setup, NEMA 34s themselves are not designed for speed, especially at 48 volts. They're more designed for a smaller chassis like a knee mill, and we're trying to get as much torque as possible. So if you're doing tougher substrates, you're cutting a lot of aluminum, thicker aluminum, this will cut through aluminum like literal butter, okay? Uh, steel, not a problem. I mean, this is what these motors are designed for. And again, you shouldn't be limited by the fact that your chassis is smaller. You only limit really is what kind of motor you can mount up. Of course, logically speaking, you're gonna find that there's a trade-off. Of course, cost comes involved. You're gonna have to buy the motors themselves. Of course, if you need a full package, I can put the package together with the NEMA 34s. I've got these in 1200 ounce inches in stock and 1700 ounce inches. I can also special order sizes if required, but these are the ones I have in stock, especially for the uh, G540, and you are creating one hell of a system, especially with a retrofit of like a Chinese 6090 or a 6040 chassis. You've got a monstrous, monstrous chassis because on top of adding these motors to the chassis, you're adding more weight, which means the chassis becomes even more stable. So. Again, these weigh about 14 pounds a piece, and that's, you know, times three axis, you start seeing just how much weight you've added, and that's prior to the adapter plate, the stainless, the hardware, and everything else, couplers. So when you look at this, you can see just how fast you've opened up a massive, massive amount of potential for your machine, okay? Typically, you'd only do this on two axis. If you're doing a full machine with three axis, that'd be your X and Y. You can, of course, use this on your Z. Uh, I've had clients do that if required. Very, very few times is that required. My 600 ounce NEMA 24 is more than enough torque to lift a 2.2 with uh, a 4K spindle. You shouldn't have any problem with that. But again, if you want to adapt the NEMA 23 platform to a NEMA 34, this is going to be the simplest, once again, plug and play type situation you'll find. Now, other component not included, of course, is your motor coupler. I can't include your motor coupler, right? I, excuse me, I can't include your motor coupler because, again, everybody has their own preference. Uh, this one's out of aluminum. Uh, again, depending on the one you want to go with, if you tell me what you're looking for, I do carry stainless. I can have the stainless couplers made if required. Uh, but overall, the coupler is really up to you as far as which way you want to go. If you are going to use my motor, then I can naturally include it. If you're not going to use my motor, I would have to, once again, custom order for you be based on the shaft. Most NEMA 34s, I'd say about 99% of the market, are going to have a 14 millimeter diameter shaft. Um, certain ones that are custom made, 
Uh, CNC router parts uses half inch. It just depends on really what you're using. So it's not practical to include the coupler. It's not practical for me to include the five millimeter long uh, NEMA 23 mounting screw to adapt to your chassis. Those you will supply, but everything else is included to make this, once again, the simplest platform there is. Now, that being said, um, if you guys have questions, because I know listening to this is a lot. There's a lot of detail, and considering the fact I'm not using cue cards, I'm sitting here and discussing this. This tells you how much I've done this, okay? I realize that there's going to be more questions with this, but keep in mind, without a doubt, if you're looking to create the most uh, most torque available on your chassis, this is going to be the easiest way to do it on a NEMA 23 platform. Okay, this is what I would consider to be like a mini Haas type platform as far as available to work. These are super strong motors, and again, um, virtually any NEMA 34, the step up is massive when you're machining. Okay, your plunge, your actual uh, depth of cut will go up dramatically. You know, again, is it for every system it's not? That's why I say questions will come up and I expect them. So again, I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope now it's giving you a full visualization and again, putting together the kit that includes everything required. You will get, of course, four of these. Let's see if I can break out here. I got everything hidden back here. It's just hiding on me. Here we go. This is the actual full kit you'll be getting. Once again, minus the coupler, with all your hardware. And then you get your bolts for your NEMA 34, self-locking nuts. We've got the stainless here, standoff, so you're all set. And you've got a full visualization of how this works, minus the CNC chassis being right here. But uh, overall, if you guys have questions, will this work, should I do it, message me direct, storm2313 at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you directly. Um, again, you can also contact me through my eBay store. I'll put the link in both, both of them actually in the description below, and you'll be set. If you like the video, guys, please like and subscribe to all my subscribers. I love you guys. Um, again, the channel's growing rapidly. I'm trying to support as many people as possible. So if you do not hear from me right away, please give me at least a day, day and a half, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all for support. Take care.